from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A sad and deadly discovery. An Oakland County mother and her two young children found dead in mid-Michigan from an apparent murder-suicide. Jason? Man dealing with some bad potholes here on Greenfield. And if this looks like kind of a homemade patchwork here, well, that's because it is. You'll meet the private citizens that came out tonight to fix their own potholes. Okay, Jason, and batch after batch of rain soaking Metro Detroit, causing flooded streets across the area, and we are not done yet. The relentless rain leading to flood watches and warnings through tomorrow. Let's start there with our late edition, Ben Bailey, tracking rain all day and last night and on and on and on. Yeah, it just it seems like this uh, deluge doesn't want to stop. And even though some of us got a break this evening, there were places, especially our west zone, where those totals continued to balloon two and three quarters inches in Pinckney. Flint picked up over two inches so far and same goes in Howell. And then those totals drop off. One of our lowest numbers really hasn't changed since early this afternoon and that's Monroe. Less than an inch of rain picked up there. Even though there was a break, still is in some parts of the area. That rain continues here in our west and north zones and there's more of it back here to the west closer to a cold front. That will gradually sweep through the area overnight. Of course, these totals will continue to increase as we get through the first half of tomorrow. Flood warning up for a myriad of rivers across the area. Rouge, Lower Rouge, Milk Creek, Clinton River, and multiple rivers in Genesee County. Most of this is for minor flooding, moderate flooding expected here in Macomb County, and a flood watch remains in effect for the entire area through Wednesday afternoon. That's even after the rain stops, and we should see the faucet shut off probably about 9 o'clock. 10 o'clock should be mainly dry, still cloudy, and getting cooler. We'll tell you what's to come on the other side of those cool temperatures in just a minute. Devin? And that freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw is leaving us with this awful reality. The potholes are bad and not getting better anytime soon. In fact, frustration boiling over in Dearborn tonight is private citizens taking to the streets to fill potholes themselves. Jason Colthorpe is there. If you take a closer look at this stretch of Greenfield here in Dearborn, just pothole city, a whole slew of it. So bad, police have shown up, put out cones, even road flares, but they might not be here if it wasn't for these guys. I'm doing it myself. Maddie Shooker and his friends are active on social media with their The City of Dearborn page on Instagram. Today, it lit up with complaints of potholes. We started on Hubbard and we, you know, making our way towards Michigan Avenue. And if you can see behind me, like, we got, we got a lot of work to do. You know, something has to get done. So we complained to the city. They say the, um, Wayne County has to take care of it. Wayne County says one, two, three, and so if they're not going to fix it, we are. With sand and gravel they bought, they tried to help, but it couldn't save flat tires on two cars. One that needed a tow truck. You know, it's a war on potholes. No more war on terror, no more war on drugs. It's a war on potholes. Eventually, police showed up and shut them down, saying Wayne County trucks were on the way. We got, we're going to have it all blacked off. We got barricades coming until they get here. Yeah. And, you know, we're, we're going to take care of it. I get to sleep happy at night knowing these potholes are going to be covered when I wake up tomorrow. And, you know, that's just, a, it's, it's sad that it, it takes, you know, just citizens to get the ball rolling. Yeah, it sure is. But about that, uh, these potholes, as it turns out, will not get filled tonight. But you can see how slow traffic is driving by here just to make sure they don't hit these things super hard. I've been talking to the county tonight. They sent out someone to check on this situation a little while ago. They did throw down some cold patch across the street, but I'm told the crews will be out here tomorrow uh, early to work on this, get it filled in. And by the way, they say it goes without saying they do not want anyone out here trying to fill their own potholes. It's just a very dangerous situation. We're in Dearborn. Jason Colthorpe, Local 4. Hey, Jason. In Warren, one stretch of Mound Road has become an obstacle course as drivers try to dodge the dangerous craters. Tim Pamplin has that part of our coverage. Currently, there are 10 disabled vehicles, flat tires along Mound. Oh, make that 11 vehicles with flat tires. 12, here comes another one. So, yes, there's a problem in Warren. It's bad. It's real bad. It goes all the way across the lane. Drivers along this stretch of Mound are at their wit's end as another driver falls victim. I went home and I, I had to know I had some road flares. Meet Mr. Harold Genuine, concerned citizen. So I figured I'd come out here and give him probably 10, 15 minutes of somebody not hitting them holes. 
Yes, Harold's flares lasted for about 15 minutes and provided a respite. It's ridiculous. I, cops come by before when you know, all the other cars were there, but they gotta, gotta patch it. I don't know where they're at. Once Harold's flares were snuffed out, the pothole was back in business. At one point, 19 vehicles, 22 tires. And then through the fog appeared this stranger, dragging an industrial-sized cone to plonk in front of this massive pothole. Just ordinary citizens stepping up and taking back the streets. That's the scene in Warren tonight with the night camp. Tim Pamplin, Local 4. My goodness, just incredible, it really is. is. Uh, this scene is becoming all too familiar. Car after car lined up on the shoulder of I-75 near the Davidson. All of those cars there, sidelined by damage from hot potholes. It's just, it's really incredible. We're seeing a lot of really nice, conscientious people, though, out <laughs> doing what they Concerned doing. citizens, yeah. yeah. Well, there are a few answers tonight in an apparent murder-suicide of an Oakland County mother and her son and daughter. They were found dead in Bangor Township near Bay City. Jermont Terry reports the children's family members were concerned for their safety. This story touches people on so many levels, but none is touched more than the family of this mother and children. I had a chance to stop by their house and they're asking for privacy and we're most definitely granting that to them as they're trying to come to terms with this very tragic loss. So many questions about the murders of the two children. Investigators in Bangor Township just outside Bay City were called to this industrial park. What a worker found near this black Lincoln left him shook to the core. Investigators say the brother and sisters, ages two and three, were both shot in their heads. The bodies found outside the car of the little boy and the little girl was in the back seat. The investigation reveals their mother murdered her children for reasons still unknown before killing herself. It's tragic. Something like this is so horrific that it's just beyond comprehension. The mother and children are from Oakland County and has no ties to Bangor County. We've learned the children's family members were concerned about their safety. Investigators came to a house in Oak Park on Monday to check on the mother and children, but they were not there. Police believe the mother put the children in the car, drove more than 100 miles to the northern portion of the state, and killed them. Their bodies were discovered by the workers Tuesday morning. It leaves so many people to wonder why or what was going on in this mother's life that she couldn't turn to a family member. Investigators say there's a chance the mother was going through a custody dispute with the children's father, but there's never a reason to go to this extreme. And again, that family asking for privacy, so many unanswered questions, but they will most definitely miss the two and three year olds that were murdered unfortunately, by the hands of their own mother. Reporting in Farmington Hills, Jermont Terry, Local 4. Okay, Jermont, okay, thank you. An emotional day for the Detroit Police Department as they say goodbye to one of their own. Officer Darren Weathers was laid to rest today. The 25-year-old was killed last week during a surveillance training exercise. Weathers left a lasting impact on the department and in his community. Family, friends, and colleagues want him to be remembered as a role model to the community he served. Survivors of last week's Florida school shooting have arrived in Tallahassee, the state capital, and that's where they're going to rally, urging lawmakers to prevent another massacre. Today, students across the state walked out of class demanding safety from gun violence on campus. But earlier this afternoon, Florida legislators voted down a motion to hear a bill on banning assault rifles in the state. Another name is added to the growing list of candidates running for Michigan's 13th Congressional District seat. Westland Mayor Bill Wild announced his candidacy for the seat vacated by former Congressman John Conyers. Conyers retired last year amid sexual harassment allegations. Wild is hoping his achievements as Westland's mayor will appeal to voters. If you have trouble getting your teen to put the phone down, you are not alone. Wait till you hear how many of them feel they need to answer messages as soon as they get them. New research coming up. Also tonight, they were called for help, but you'll see why these medics actually had to call for backup. Jamie? You watch the Olympians fly down the mountain in the Olympics. Why not come out to Mount Brighton and try some of these things yourself? So I've skied but never raced before, and they're going to send me on that mountain with these skis. I think I'll make it. We'll wait and see. I'm a believer that anything is possible. I've got a vision and I'm going to make it true. Find your
your morning moment here. It's product test week on Local 4 News Today. See which inventive items get the gold and which fail to perform tomorrow. Wondering about your blood pressure? Well, you may have seen this product on TV or social media. I'm putting the Color Doctor blood pressure monitor to the test to see if it could help you. The moment you wake up, turn to Local 4 News Today. You've been watching the ski racing in the Winter Olympics, you really can't blink. The downhill skiers hit speeds that can be between 80 and 90 miles an hour. So fast. You may be thinking, how did those athletes get that good? Well, they probably started on a small hill <laughs> like Mount Brighton. Our Jamie Edmonds headed that way to meet up with folks competing just like the Olympians do. It's a beautiful night at Mount Brighton. The sun is setting, and best of all, the snow has fallen. But these border cross competitors don't have time to stop and smell the roses. They have a race to run. Snowboard cross became an Olympic sport in 1998 and has grown in popularity ever since. Tonight on this mountain, local high schoolers are squaring off. Sometimes it gets a little edgy. It can get pretty physical at times when uh, you have two racers trying to make the same flag. Sometimes one will try to cut you off and push you into the flag, but you just got to be physical and push back. It's not for Olympic gold, but there's plenty on the line. States last year, I got put into A1 as a junior, and I was going down and it was like butt to butt, and like for third pl or for second place, and I, I don't know, you just do that at the very end, stick your board out, and I somehow pulled it off, and that was pretty fun. A few hundred yards away, on a different side of the mountain, it's the skiers racing for their best times. Ski racing is actually combined two runs. So they get they set two courses, they do the boys in one course, the girls in the other, then they switch. And it's combined fastest time wins. Jaden Ceylon from Saline High School just started racing this year. Um, I didn't know how like fast paced it was. I didn't know that it was going to be um, a lot going on during the race. Andrew Myers is a Brighton High School freshman. He's competed in the Junior Olympics before. The adrenaline gets pumping and I, it's just a lot of fun. I just like, it's quick and it's just my thing. Maybe one of these kids is the next Lindsey Vaughn or Red Gerard. It's mountains like these where those Olympians got their start. So they get their roots here. So Lindsey Vaughn, for example, is out of Buck Hill in Minnesota. But there are thousands of kids, if you were to do a swing around the Great Lakes, including Michigan, there are thousands of kids who are racers who come out and get started here and then move out west to the bigger programs. Chris Cataldo has been teaching skiing for 45 years. She says there's a buzz on the mountain because of this year's Olympics. She encourages anyone who might have an interest to come and try it. We get a lot of excited people who come out, who pick up the buzz. They come out, they want to try a race. They want to try something different and something new. For now, these go over your hand. Count me in. I'm a skier, but never raced before. And the good people at Mount Brighton set a course, similar to the public course anyone can access. And Chris gave me some pointers. You're gonna go on the right side of it, and right. this shoulder. Just brush the shoulder. Yeah. And you're gonna go on the left side of the next one. Nobody look at me, I've never raced before. Look away. <laughs> We're gonna do great. You got it. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> house to finish line it took less than 20 seconds what a rush well I want to thank Chris for giving me this experience first time racer I'm basically ready for 2022 sure <laughs> <laughs> I would say if you want to try this Olympic sport the border cross or the ski racing come here to Mount Brighton Jamie Edmonds local four where was the encouragement? Come on, <laughs> 2022, Beijing. a little bit Beijing. more challenging, but yeah, good, good for Jamie. She's, she's awesome. She's a terrific athlete. Yeah. Don't, I'm not buying this. I've never <laughs> raced know. on skis before. <laughs> Here's a look at what uh, defender Kevin Dietz is working on for tomorrow night. It's Michigan's third largest city, but has only one African-American police officer. And the diversity director just quit, saying his boss told him to put diversity on the back burner until after the election. As a person who's been committed to diversity, it was outrageous 
to hear that. He says racism is rampant in the suburban community, and he's saying it under oath. You have people who would say things like, black people can't pass the test. But wait until you hear the city side of the story. The Defenders, tomorrow night at 11. Well, you saw the scenes earlier. It's a mess on the roadways right now. A lot of that water uh, kind of is deceiving as you're to how right. deep what it is you're about to drive through can be. Craters, yeah, yeah, it's pretty bad. That's why we say turn around, don't drown. If yeah. you can't see the pavement, don't go through yeah. it. Yep. Uh, but I'm, you know some people are going to do that tomorrow yeah. morning because uh, you got to get to work and that rain isn't going to stop. Uh, here comes four live radar and you can see where we've been seeing the uh, Rainfall totals increase, and that's basically our west and north zone. Stuff's a lot lighter than some of the rounds that we've been through today, but we're going to see more of it, and it's going to spread across the entire area as we get overnight. We've seen lots of storm pins tonight of the flooding. All of these pictures we're going to show you are not rivers. This is a walking path at uh, Lake St. Clair Metro Park, uh, and also uh, on the other side of the area. This is out in Gregory on Gregory Road. Look at that, the entire road is completely flooded. I don't know what the hood of that car is doing uh, in that uh, picture. And somebody trying to get to work in Allen Park um, probably didn't get there, although you can see a truck on the other side uh, going to try its luck. And again, uh, if you can't see the bottom of the pavement, uh, it's best not to go through that because uh, it just causes a whole lot of problems and could be uh, gumming up the works for folks trying to get uh, get by behind you. 57 is where we're at right now. Not much of a wind out there. Visibility at a full 10 miles. Most of that fog is gone. We broke three separate records today. Warmest high, the warmest low, and the most precip. But we shattered this one, 1891. And one of the reasons why is uh, when we look at liquid precip in February, this is usually a snow total, uh, but uh, we didn't have that uh, quite today. We had a lot of moisture. 57 is where we're at right now, and you can see the progress of that cold front as it moves across the state. Already 34 in Chicago, 35 in St. Louis. 19 back in Kansas City and here's how the rain looks as we speak. Not much uh, easterly progress so far, but you can see there's a pretty thick band of water and all that's coming through before it finally comes to an end tomorrow morning. Timing on that looks like we'll maximize some of the heavier rain about three in the morning. Still a chance there could be a rumble of thunder out there, but it's a pretty low shot and then that rain finally tapers off between nine and 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. May get a little bit of thinning of clouds here in north zone as we get into the afternoon. Then once once we get into Thursday, uh, this is the first model run that's showing this, and I want to draw your attention to the south zone. Looks like there could be some snow showing up as we get into Thursday morning. This is south of Detroit. It's not going to last very long, just a couple hours. Should be gone by lunch. But again, most of the models have kept that system south. This is the first one we're seeing that it's just brushing our south zone, so don't have a whole lot of confidence in that. Bottom line on the rain tonight, now through 9 a.m., we're looking for less than an inch of additional accumulation, but we're all going to pick up a little bit of something. River and street flooding, of course, the biggest impacts and those uh, masquerading potholes uh, that you can't see that are filled with water. 9 a.m. temperature is very cold tomorrow, considering where we've been. 38 in the city. We'll start out in the upper 30s in our south zone tomorrow. Everybody's going to be above freezing, thank goodness, but not by much. A lot of 33s in our west and north zone for temperatures starting at 9 a.m. Those are going to be our lows tomorrow. Then our forecast highs, not much behind that. 42, we will be dry after the commute. Milder air returns with yeah. the rain. On Friday. Kind of springy there, temperature was for a mm -hmm. while. Yeah, right back. All right, well, medics forced to defend themselves when they get called in for help. What happened when they arrived on the scene? Also, it would have been a history making meeting, but tonight we're learning why plans fell through for Vice President Mike Pence to meet with North Korean leaders. Back in just a minute. Tonight, the White House says Vice President Pence was set to meet with representatives from North Korea during his visit to the Olympic Games. It was set to be a historic meeting between the two, including Pence and Kim Jong-un's sister, but North Korea canceled at the last minute. Pence planned on discussing concerns with North Korea's missile program, of course. Unclear why North Korea walked away from the meeting. A routine 911 call turns dangerous when paramedics get attacked by their patient. Let go of him! Let go of him now! Let go of him now! 
The paramedics told police the man became belligerent on the way to the hospital and even put one of the first responders in a chokehold. The driver pulled over so he could help his partner. Police arrived and used a stun gun to subdue the man. Both first responders are expected to be okay. If you have trouble getting your teenagers off their phones, you got a lot of company. According to a new study by Common Sense Media, one out of two teens feel they're addicted to their phones. 72% of teens feel they need to respond to messages as soon as they get them. Parents say their kids get dis distracted and don't pay attention, which leads to arguments. Experts attribute teens' behavior to the fear of missing out or FOMO. FOMO.